You read the name of the video. Beware of propaganda. You're being hit by propaganda all the time. Propaganda has a long and storied history throughout, well, throughout the whole world. Um, there's always been one side saying bad things about the other side. In any political or personal disagreement, there's always been people calling down the other person, saying untrue things about them, or saying things that are just overly exaggerated about the other person or the other political party or what have you, whoever's involved in the situation. Now, this has happened throughout history. Um, became extremely prevalent, probably, well, probably started in World War I, really got mastered in World War II. If you look through World War II, you had, I mean, propaganda was strong in World War II. You had, uh, you had the Nazis with uh, Joseph Goebbels, uh, their propaganda minister, they actually called it that. Um, Basically, he was in charge of making movies, uh, uh, news accounts, uh, anything they could do to make to make the Nazis look more powerful than they actually were to try to make everybody on the other side feel like there was no chance going up against them. Um, saying a bunch of bad things about other people, um, all of the uh, all of the bad things they had to say about Jewish people, they got passed through their problem propaganda ministry. I mean, just horrible, horrible stuff, right? And we all know about that now. We have uh, we know how horrible the Nazis were. Uh, we know, you know, the atrocities they committed, and we know what they did to make their country believe that what they were doing was right. Um, but we're catching that from the side of the victor. You got to understand that victors get to write the history books. And you also have to understand that they were not the only ones doing it back in World War II. The Allies were just as engaged in propaganda. I can give you several examples. Um, the fact that the, uh, that the, uh, have you ever heard of the Spanish flu, for example? Let's go with that one. Uh, the Spanish flu was a, uh, was a, a pandemic that hit during, uh, during uh, World War World War One, actually, um, going back to to that war, um, the Spanish flu was a was a horrible horrible uh, uh, pandemic that passed through basically most of the world. Um, I know I believe when I, I checked up news accounts on it, and in the area that I live in, the uh, the East Kootenays in uh, in Canada, in the heart of the Rockies. I believe when it came through, 100 people or something died in this area, right? So we're talking a real pandemic, you know. People came through and, and we see we saw people dying from it, or they did, you know. Um, and that was horrible, right? And they called it the Spanish flu, and everybody believes that it came from Spain. But the absolute truth of the matter was that it started in America. And the American government had rules in place during World War I that... None of the uh, none of the uh, news agencies were allowed to print anything that was too depressing to the American people because we wanted to keep their spirits up, being that they were in the middle of the fight. So this flu was raging through America, but they weren't allowed to talk about it. They weren't allowed to talk about anything bad happening in America, but they were allowed to talk about things bad happening in Spain where the flu also was, even though it started in America. So they reported on all of the deaths in Spain. And therefore, people called it the Spanish flu. And that's where we get that name from. Even though it started in America, that is propaganda right there. That is an instance of using information to make people believe a certain thing or to make people feel a certain way. That's what propaganda is. Now, you go back into World War II and the... Uh, the uh, president at the time, I believe, Franklin D. Roosevelt was in a wheelchair. He was unable to walk. Therefore, whenever they showed uh, video or pictures of uh, Roosevelt, Stalin, and Churchill together, the three leaders of uh, you know America, uh, England, and Russia, whenever they showed pictures of them together, they always showed them sitting down because they didn't want anybody to know that Roosevelt was in such a bad 
way that he was unable to walk, that he was that sick. That's propaganda trying to make him look stronger than he actually was. Um, now, the biggest, the absolute biggest propaganda that was pushed by the Allies in World War II was the belief that Joseph Stalin was a good leader to his people. Roosevelt actually used to refer to Joseph Stalin as Uncle Joe. They had this whole idea that uh, Joseph Stalin was this was this uh, beloved person in his country and this person worth fighting for. And the fact of the matter is, is that Joseph Stalin was absolutely the worst leader in World War II as it came to being responsible for the death of other people. Absolutely worse than Hitler. Joseph Stalin killed, I think it was something like 20 million of his own people. When the Russians started winning World War II and pushing back towards, towards uh, Berlin, they call that the Rape of Berlin. The Russians came through and destroyed and killed and raped at will and just totally decimated the countryside on their way. People, German soldiers were trying to trying to give up in World War II, but they would fight to get away from the Russians so that they could give up to the Americans because they knew how badly the Russians were going to treat them. Now, the Nazis were bad, and I'm not saying anything against the Russian people. I blame this totally on Stalin, and anybody who knows anything about the history of it all would do the same thing. This was all Stalin. I mean, Stalin was responsible for, uh, he had what, what they call them, commissars, I think. Um, there were political officers, and their job was to shoot you if you refused to fight. If any of his generals were too good at their jobs, and he felt that they were a risk to his power, he would have them shot. Joseph Stalin destroyed his people. He was absolutely, absolutely horrible. But America and England tried to make him out to be a saint so that people would be okay with us fighting for them because really we were fighting for them. They were the only ones still at war with Germany in mainland Europe. They were the ones that were at risk of being beaten. They were the ones we were, we were protecting, basically, at that time. So, it's propaganda in World War II. It was just unbelievably, it was used by all sides. And we are not free from using it. We are not free from the, uh, from the guilt of using it to cover up atrocities on our side. World War II was a bad time. Everybody did some bad things. At any rate, we believe things to be a certain way now that maybe they weren't necessarily. Absolutely the worst. The worst for atrocities committed in that war was the Russians. If you look it up, you can look up the history, you can look up the numbers. Joseph Stalin was responsible for way, way more death than anybody else. Nazis were still horrible, don't get me wrong. At any rate, you keep going up through that and you see, uh, you look through Vietnam, you look through, uh, you look through uh, Desert Storm, um, you look at, uh, after 9-11, I mean, we, we went after Iraq, to, to make up for 9-11, that was, that was the, that was, that was the route that we took. I mean, obviously looking back now, you can see the fault in this, but at the time, we were being told that all of the uh, all of the information that they had pointed towards this being the case. This was the place to go to fight this war. And you know, in the end, maybe it's possible somebody was uh, just trying to impress their father. It's unfortunate, but you know, we've uh, we've got that own situation in our uh, in our country right now. We've got a uh, a very liberal prime minister who's. Uh, trying to make himself 
uh, trying to make a bigger difference than his father did. And his father was also very liberal. But uh, this guy we got now, we're, we're in some trouble here. But anyways, I'm going to stay away from that one. Um, so now, you've got all this propaganda. You go all the way up through COVID. Our, uh, there, was a, there was an article, I'll actually put, put a link in the description below this, uh, below this video. Uh, there was an article that was put out, I believe it was the Ottawa Citizen and also McLean's Magazine put it out. Um, I can't find the McLean's Magazine one anymore. It seems to have been purged from online, but the Ottawa Citizen article is still up. Um, the Canadian military actually admitted to using propaganda techniques during COVID on the Canadian public. They say that the government did not ask them to do it or give them permission to do it, that they did it on their own. However, um, who knows? Who knows the actual truth? The thing about propaganda is you don't know the actual truth about what's happened with it. And that's what we've got to look at here. We've run into a situation with social media especially. Social media has just enabled us to interact with people that we wouldn't normally be able to interact with in ways that we wouldn't normally be able to. And it's really, it's ballooned into the last couple of years into just a big slugfest. It's just a messy war in the trenches online right now on social media. And propaganda is just, it's on all sides right now. I mean, you got, you, you look at Joe Biden during the last election telling, uh, telling uh, black people that if they didn't vote Democrat, then they weren't black. That's, that's propaganda. That's calling somebody down, calling down another person's decisions to make them feel like they have to go your way. This is all, it's using information and tactics online or, or through visual or radio, audio means to guide a person to a, to a decision or a, uh, situation that you want them to be in. And let me be absolutely clear. The left uses, uses propaganda and the right uses propaganda. There's no getting away from it now. It's just, it's all over the place. And it's not filtered like you. We used to, we used to maybe see a little bit of it on the news. Um, although the news has become a massive tool for propaganda now too. It used to be that the news was True. Back in my parents' day, they wouldn't put a story on the news unless it had been vetted and they could they could uh, prove its truth to a certain degree, enough uh, to a certain level, and then they would put it on on the news. And if it didn't get to that level, they would tell you this is if if it was something that was just in their minds, they would tell you this is a this is a uh, they would say this is an opinion piece. And you would know that that's just their opinion. That's not based on facts. That's their opinion. But now the news puts out opinion as facts. And people, governments put out opinion as facts. Sometimes both of them are putting out complete untruths as facts. And both sides are doing it. Liberal, conservative, they're both doing it. Make absolutely no mistake. Just because you believe that your ideals go along with a certain side doesn't mean that side isn't using propaganda to make their case a little more prevalent. And we've really gotten to a situation where they almost have to. In order to go up against each other, if you've got one person screaming bloody murder about the other one saying horrible things and the other person is like, oh, it's not true, there's no facts, and not fighting back, they're going to lose. Right, So you're in a situation where both sides have to use propaganda. But the thing about it is, if we've reached a situation now because of that, where you've got the left screaming their propaganda and the right screaming their propaganda, and in all reality, most of us as human beings, as good human beings, we're actually sitting in the middle. We have a couple of, some people are off slightly to the left, just off center to the left. Some people are just off center to the right. That is where most of society sits, is right in that center, a little left, a little right. Those people who are way left and way right, those, are, those people are outliers. They are not the norm. Most of us sit right here. We're right there. Like we're mingling with each other. We're so close. But propaganda, 
and the left screaming their propaganda and the right screaming their propaganda. It's pulling us apart, not in how we believe, but in how we act. We still have beliefs that put us close to the center. But as soon as somebody is a little conservative, now the liberals, the liberal left is, oh, you're, you're a Nazi, you're a, you're a populist, you're, you know, and they're saying horrible things for just being a little bit to the right. And as soon as somebody's a little bit to the left, the right is going, oh, you're, uh, you're, and your woke bullshit is, is wrecking our society and just saying horrible things about them. But in reality, in reality, if we would just realize it and stop letting the far left and the far right push us around, we'd realize we're right here. We're not that far away from each other. This is where the power is, right here in the center. For the most part, except for a couple things, we agree on how things should be. They want to tear us apart. But we're here. We don't need to fight. We have to stop letting propaganda pull us apart. It's pulling us into all of these global idealistic arguments online. And we're forgetting about what's here, our community. Brotherhood, us living in this world together, not online, in person, out in the streets, that's here. That's where we need to work. They don't want us to work on that because if we work on that, they have no power over us. And propaganda is all about gaining power. Don't let that get lost on you. You know what? It's okay to have your ideals over here and your ideals over here. You know, when it comes to something, something big, if you want to go to a protest and, uh, and protest something because you believe strongly in it, go do that. But don't make that your life, right? Go do your protest, make your voice be heard, but come back to the center where we are. And let's work on things there. Instead of fighting each other over what's going on out in the world, Let's build here in our communities. Let's build better communities and better people. Let's all be role models. Let's make the world a better place because you do that here in the center, in our communities, on the streets. That's where we make a better world. The stuff that's happening out there, that's not hitting us here. This is where we're needed. We have to stop letting all this propaganda pull us apart and come together here in our communities and build. The average person is a good person. In their heart, they want good things for everybody. The people who want to tear people down, they're, they're pretty much an outlier too for the most part. The people who are just professional wanting to pull people apart and pull them down, they're an outlier too. And they tend to be out here. It's built here. We make the world a better place here. This will take care of itself. We build strength here. We figure this out together instead of working against each other. Now you might be saying, well, I've got these strong beliefs about things that are going on in the world. You've got the war in Ukraine, what's going on with Russia, what's going on with, uh, with China, what's going on with North Korea. Well, Let's be, let me be brutally honest with you. Those things are important on a world stage. They definitely are. But you and me, we don't know what's happening there. They've got their propaganda. They've got their propaganda. They're both telling you it's true. We have no actual clue on what the actual story is in those areas. I guarantee you we're not being told the truth by either side. So picking a side that's based on untruths, it's okay to have your ideas and your ideals, but don't let things that are built on untruths become your world, right? Have your opinion, 
But if somebody else has a different opinion than you, that's okay. What's going on in Israel and Afghanistan, or not Afghanistan, uh, Gaza right now, same thing, right? Palestine, same thing. We don't know the whole story from either side. We don't. So have your ideals, and I'm not going to blame you for thinking either way on any of those subjects. But the fact of the matter is, is we don't know the whole truth. We can't make a decision on it. And us fighting between each other based on those things that we have no idea about, that we're not being told the truth about, that's not productive. Let your fellow man have his beliefs. Let him have his opinions. But let's not fight about that stuff. Let's not fight about what's happening out here. It's built here. Great. We build here. We start exerting more control on the people because we have power if we build here. And we start exerting more control on the people who are doing things out here. And we hold them accountable because we're strong. We're a strong society. We hold our politicians accountable at that point. We stop allowing them to get away with what they get away with right now. You look at question period. Here in Canada, we have this thing called question period where they basically, each side, the liberals and the conservatives get to ask each other questions back and forth. It's a slug fest. Nobody says anything. It's absolutely horrific. We get strong here. We hold them to account there. We can do that. If we build a strong society, they can't get away with that shit anymore. We build a strong society, we exert more control over them, and we exert more control over our future as a society. We need to build our society back up again. It's fallen down. Social media, government, propaganda, it's torn us apart. We need to pull back together. You do that at the local level, at the community level. That's where society gets built. We've lost track of that. I just want to see all of us out there building, building a better future for everybody. We can do it. It takes little steps. I know it may seem like such a big thing. You may think, oh, if I go fight these big things, they're big things and I'm making a difference. But no, you're not. We need to make a difference here. Here's where the difference needs to be made. And that difference may seem small, but it's a bunch of differences and they all add up. And before you know it, we're strong again. And when we're strong, brothers and sisters, it's just better for everybody. All right, so let's get out there. Let's build ourselves. That's the most important thing. You need to build yourself. You can't build anything else if you haven't built yourself first. So work on yourself. Get your health in order. Get your mind in order. Get your life in order. Take control of your life. Build a life. Build the absolute best version of yourself. Pick up your pen and write your own story and be the hero in that story. That's how you make the differences. That's how we build here. If all of us do that. And then the kids looking up at us, look at us and go, wow, they're strong. Look at those superheroes. I want to be like that. And then they become strong. That's how we make things better. All right. So get out there, build. Help each other up. Help your fellow man. If you can't help your fellow man, don't hurt him. And if he's not hurting you, don't hurt him. Let him be. Let's look out for each other. Let's pull each other up. Let's try to be the best versions of ourselves that we can. Let's help our fellow man. Let's just, let's build. Let's build. Let's do it. We can do it. Let's do it. All right. If you feel like helping out the, uh, helping out the Good Man Initiative, feel free to give a like, uh, subscribe, throw a comment on this video. Uh, everything helps with the algorithm, gets us out to more people. Um, share, share the video, help, help others to see it. And maybe we can, uh, build more positivity in some other people's lives. If you, uh, feel like you could, uh, help out the good man initiative in a monetary way, you can feel free to go over to our Patreon. I'll put a link in the description so that you can, uh, so you can find us there. 
And uh, if you feel you can and that uh, what we're doing is worth it and that I'm doing a good enough job, then feel free to throw some uh, to throw some uh, some help out our way. Please, if you can't do it, if it's not something that's available to you, if if it's going to hinder you, then please don't. Right? I want to see you help yourself first. Right? The most important thing is to get yourself built. But if you do feel like that you could, uh, that you want to help us out, that we're doing a good enough job, then feel free to become a patron on Patreon and, uh, and help us out. And maybe we can build this up better, make better videos, make more of them, uh, do more exciting things, help out the communities more. This is, uh, this is my life and this is my calling and this is what I'm going to do. So if you want to help out with that, if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, help that happen, then feel free. All right. I love you guys. I hope you're all living your best life. I hope you're all treating each other well, taking care of your families, taking care of yourselves, and uh, writing the best story you possibly can. Be the hero. All right? I love you guys.